Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will be discussing our topic which is uh, cyclodeviation. So, so the term cyclodeviation when we say it is not very much apparent to see because here the deviation is basically the rotation of the eye into the anterior posterior axis. So what happens the eye is either entorted or either it is extorted from the primary position. So that is if you see this eye is going into an entorsion or this eye is going into an extortion. So that is what is cyclo deviation. So let's see what it exactly means. So it refers to the misalignment of the visual axis or the eyes around the anterior posterior axis. So if you see it is further classified depending on the constancy of the deviation or the character or the rather direction of your uh, deviation. So it is uh, further described into your cyclophoria or cyclotropia. So constancy when we say cyclophoria is the moment you occlude one eye the eye will go in into an entorsion or an extortion state whereas cyclotropia is even without the uh, need of your occluder you will find out that the patient is having the eyes entorted or extorted however it is very difficult to see such cases and you can only examine such things uh, with the help of your haploscopic device or either with the help of your double medox rod or other things so depending on the character of the deviation when we say it could be de differentiated into in cyclo or ex cyclo so the term ex cyclophoria or tropia means that the 12 o'clock position of the cornea will rotate uh, temporally or the outward from the primary position whereas in cyclotropia means the inward rotation of the eye so this is the first example which is your excyclotropia and this is the second example which is your encyclotropia coming on to the etiology so the etiology is with the uh, sixth condition which they commonly say it is either because of the paresis or the paralysis of the cyclovertical muscles which are responsible for the entorsion or the extorsion so you can see an uh, encyclotropia or an excyclotropia if at all there is a paralysis of your superior or inferior oblique uh, it is also seen in dissociated vertical deviation also seen with a or v pattern horizontal strabismus horizontal deviation with simple hyperphoria or when the surgical uh, correction is done with the help of the recti or oblique muscles so what happens these start overacting or underacting which could lead to the intorsion or extortion and there are some other conditions which are again responsible which include your endocrine ophthalmopathy myasthenia gravis and plagiocephaly so these are all related to your neuro uh, uh, neuro conditions so these can also uh, result to your cyclo now coming on to the clinical characteristic when we say there is first thing which is commonly seen is cyclofusion so what do i mean by the term cyclofusion that when you do it with a double medox rod when you break the fusion you will find out that there is a presence of cyclophoria or cyclotropia but when the patient has been given similar stimuli in both the eyes what happens that the brain tries to superimpose the image and make it fused with the help of a cyclofusion it is similar to what you can say like when we do convergence and divergence to fuse so what happens the eye can also entort and extort to fuse your two different images into making it single so cyclofusion is seen in such cases when the amount of deviation is very less suppression in ARC if you are unable to do the cyclofusion what happens that the eye which is into an entorted or an extorted state will start suppressing itself so the moment it will suppress the diplopia will go off or what will happen the fovea which is uh, situated as the retinomotor zero will be displaced or a new point in the retina will be taken as a fovea taking into the state of abnormal retinal correspondence also you can see this suppression which can be seen in more peripheral or where the uh, intorsion or extortion is more present uh, there is some of the physiologic adaptation when we say the term physiologic adaptation what happens that uh, they compensate the image tilt with the help of your uh, uh, spatial orientation so what happens if you see this is the entorted eye so v1 h2 v2 and h1 
are the actual axis but the image is placed this way so what happens that the patient should actually see a intorted image something like this because of the intorsion or extortion but what happens that as the patient has developed a neurophysiological basis of the orientation and turning it into a proper uh, position the patient will perceive it as a proper cross so let it be whatever is being perceived by the retina because of the physiological adaptation what happens that the patient doesn't perceive the tilt of the image and can see all the images properly so this is what happens also there are some of the psychological adaptations uh, it is basically that uh, the spatial clues which are present now for example you have a good memory that how a window looks or how a particular door looks it is not tilted it is straight so because this memory has been imprinted into your brain your brain already knows that the window cannot be tilted it is always straight so though even the image is being perceived uh, as tilted tilted the brain will perceive it as straight so this is a psychological adaptation which is seen in this patients so whenever a new object is given to them they might say that there is a tilt but whenever there is a memorable object which is given something which they have seen previously they will say there is no tilt present coming on to the diagnostic test there could be either a subjective or an objective test so subjective means wherever the patient will also give a feedback whereas an objective is where the examiner will see how things are changing so in subjective test we have double medox rod double medox rod test uh, double prism and medox rod test begolini striated lens test and lenkester's red green test so these are all subjective test whereas in objective with the help of ophthalmoscopy you can see a tilt in the uh, retina Uh, a fundus photography a monocular visual field testing so what is double medox rod test what we do here is we with the full refractive correction we keep one eye with a red medox rod and one with a white medox rod so if you see in this image there is the right eye has been having a red medox whereas the left eye is given a white medox and we ask the patient if the patient and see two lines so and then we asked how the lines are uh, inclined at each other so if the patient doesn't have any torsional deviation he will say both the lines are parallel to one another whereas if the patient say there is a tilt in the image that means there is a torsional deviation present so if the line is tilted on to the right hand side it goes down it is right in cyclo torsion if it is on the left hand side it will say the right ex cyclo torsion okay so depending on which line is tilted or the color of the line that will depend that right eye or left eye which one is affected double uh, prism and medox rod test is basically in this what happens that in one eye we put a uh, medox uh, uh, rod and in the other eye what we do is we put a double prism which is basically two prisms kept base to base so what happens that the here what we have done is in left eye we have put the medox rod so that's why the patient can see a single line okay and uh, what happens is your uh, the other eye uh, is having two different um, stimuli because of the bi prism so what happens the prism makes one single image as two different images so patient can see a total of three line so in here the patient has kept with left eye as medox and right eye with the prism so this is how the patient sees okay so if the vice versa is done for example in this case uh we have kept the right eye with the medox and uh, left eye with the bi prism so the patient if he has a right encyclophoria he will say there is a right side inclination if it has a right excyclophoria he have will have a ex, uh, this kind of interpretation in case of no cyclophoria he will say all the three lines are parallel to one another okay so in terms of encyclophoria you will say that in that particular side the line is going downwards in ex cyclophoria the line will go upward begolini striated lens test here basically we show a pen light to the patient and because of the begolini striation he will say to cross and in presence of any vertical deviation he will say that the tilting of the line is seen in the uh, actual observation again lancaster's red green test can be done here what you ask the patient uh, you have red and green filter and there is one torch which is kept with you and one torch with the patient you show a particular light at one particular gaze and you ask the patient to coincide with his light so if there is any tilt what he'll do he'll keep the image of his point as a bit tilted 
and you can find out that what kind of tilt is present and with that we can understand that is it an excyclophoria or an encyclophoria and in which I the next test is uh, some of the software based uh, evaluation have also been come into practice where you ask the patient to align two different lines so what you do is you ask the patient to wear a red green filter uh, so there are two lines one with uh, a particular red and another with the, with the green and you ask the patient to align them or coincide them on one another so if the patient for example is aligning and says that now it is aligned but actually it is being tilted from the original point so you can find out how much deviation and intortion or extortion is present so this is completely done with the help of software base so the software will calculate whatever orientation is present another way of doing this is ophthalmoscopy and fundus photography so if you see this is the actual line of sight so if you make a parallel so if you join the fovea and your uh, uh, what we say in the optic disc it will make a straight line and from the perpendicular position you can find out how much degree it has been entorted so in this case if I say the eye has gone into a state of entorsion so there is 25 degree of entorsion here whereas in this case the eye has gone into an extorted state which is around 30 degree of extortion so by making this on fundus photography you can understand how much amount of deviation it is done again these are all very helpful with the software based model very easy to find out so fundus photography you can find out with this thing also there is monocular field uh, visual testing so what we do is we generally do a visual field analysis and then we see the shift of the field how much it is deviating from the original point and then we can find out how much degree of deviation it is so if you see in these two images uh, in this the eye has actually uh, being entorted so that there is an entorsion present of 13.3 degree whereas here again there is an entorsion of 12.7 degree so this is how we can do it with the help of visual field testing treatment when we say here the treatment is only done when there is a symptomatic need for the patient so there is no as such treatment other than surgery for this patients so it can be done with subjective cyclodeviation associated with vertical deviation when the patient is having your subjective cyclodeviation and there is vertical deviation present so there can be surgery done to treat this so treatment of subjective cyclodeviation is associated can be done by your Harada Ito procedure so what they generally do is they uh, do a muscle surgery onto your superior oblique tendon and rather the over action or under action which is being done they particularly do a weakening or tightening procedure the other are nasal transposition of inferior rectus so what you do is the inferior rectus which is placed right uh, uh, below your globe you do it slightly nasal transposition you take it slightly nasal or you can do a temporal transposition of the superior rectus what you do is you can take the superior rectus and uh, cut it from the insertion point and insert it slightly temporal to the original insertion point and finally there is nasal transposition of inferior rectus combined with the temporal transposition of the superior rectus this is done when the amount of intorsion uh, or extorsion is very much high so depending on that the amount of uh, transposition is uh, calibrated and the procedure is performed so I hope the video will help you to understand the cyclodeviation its clinical feature and uh, how it is being evaluated with the help of different procedures we will be back with uh, many other videos on binocular vision and strabismus so do subscribe our channel that is optometry with Tariq and for any doubts please put it onto your comment box uh, whatever your questions are please feel free to ask thank you and uh, thanks for your patient listening goodbye